Good morning all. For a couple of classes we have been discussing the index properties of soil. We said that the index properties of soil includes the particle size distribution, the plasticity features, the relative density etc. And these index properties would help you to index or perhaps to a certain extent classify the soil. Now in this particular video we will start with the Indian standard classification of soil. Now classification in general is nothing but the arrangement so when you talk about the classification of soil it's about the arrangement of soil into different groups such that the soil in a particular group will have a similar behavior it's like arranging the students based on their for example the cgpa or based on their heights when you are standing in a row example just an example so uh, these are nothing but arrangement of soil, the classification, so that it's easy for us, the engineers, or perhaps the layman, to understand or to estimate the behavior. So it helps to systemize the soil. It's done based on the index properties of soil, the ones that we have already discussed, and is useful in providing a common language between the engineers for example if you are an engineer at a site and you identify the soil to be let's say well graded sand and what you communicate to the design engineer back at the design office perhaps let's say 300 kilometers away would be just two sets of words well graded sand or sw so the design engineer at the design office will have to get a feel of what the soil is and how the soil would behave so it's it's it, this classification is something that gives a common language between the engineers and language nonetheless so the approximate assess, assessment of the suitability of the soil for construction can be done using the classification now though there are different uh, bodies or organizations that gives out different sets of classifications. The one that we follow in India is based on the Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, and it's called Indian Standard Classification. So based on the Indian Standard Classification, soil is grouped or classified into 18 groups. 1, 8. Soil, in general, can be coarse-grained or fine grained and coarse grained soil can be gravel or sand and fine grained soil can be silt clay or peat so in short peat clay silt sand and gravel all together constitute to the mother soil and the symbols that we use for the gravel, sand, silt, clay, peat, etc. are given here. They are called the primary symbols. So gravel is G, sand is S, clay is C, silt is M, and the secondary symbols include well-graded W, poly-graded P, the one that has low plasticity will be L, the one that has intermediate plasticity will be I, the one that has high plasticity will be H, etc. So based on the combinations of primary symbols and secondary symbols, you can classify and give notations to each of these soil kind. And peat is usually represented by PT. It's rarely encountered. Nonetheless, it's given PT. So these are the primary symbols G, S, C, M, etc. And the secondary symbols are W, P, L, I, M, H, etc. But like we said, it's based on the index properties. So gravel or G is when you have more than 50% of the soil that you've taken is retained on 4.75 seed. For example, if you have taken 1 kilograms of soil and if around 501 gram is retained on 4.75 millimeter sieve you can classify that to be gravel and if more than 50 percentage passes through 4.75 millimeter sieve it can be classified as sand or s 
So G is for gravel, S is for sand. Now L, low plasticity, is when the liquid limit, WL, is less than 35%. And I, intermediate plasticity, is when the liquid limit falls between 35% and 50%. And H is when the liquid limit, WL, is greater than 50%. 50%. Now we'll try to take up a few combinations of secondary symbols as well. GW. It's a well graded gravel. GW, you have gravel, you have well graded. So it's well graded gravel. A well graded gravel is when you have the CU value is greater than 4 and CC value falls between 1 and 3. CU value is nothing but the uniformity coefficient, the one that we had discussed in the grain size analysis distribution. And CC is the coefficient of curvature. The CU is, of course, D60 by D10, and CC is the coefficient of curvature. So if the soil that you have taken is such that more than 50% is retained on 4.75, it's gravel. And if CU is greater than 4 and CC is between 1 and 3, you can call that well graded. So in short, the soil that you have taken would be categorized as well graded gravel or GW. And GP is a poorly graded gravel. So it's quite simple. Anything that doesn't fit into this criteria is a poorly graded gravel. So if it's gravel and if it doesn't fall into the CU greater than 4, CC between 1 and 3 criteria, it's poorly graded gravel. Analogous to that, you have GM. It's a combination of silty gravel. M is for silt, G is for gravel. So silty gravel is GM when you have IP is less than 4. Second one is GC. That's clay gravel. And that is when IP is greater than 7. And if the IP falls between 4 and 7, it's called as a borderline classification. So if it's less than 4, it's GM. If it's greater than 7, it's the GC. And if it falls between 7 and 4, you will have to give dual symbols, GMGC. It's a dual symbol. So the whole story listed in this particular slide is about G or gravel. Likewise, you have something for sand, SW. It's well graded sand. S is for sand, W is for well graded. Now if you classify the soil to be well graded sand, if it meets the criteria for sand based on the size, which we have discussed in the previous slide, and if CU is greater than 6 and CC falls between 1 and 3. So if it's if it's such that CU is greater than 6, CC falls between 1 and 3, and if more than 50% passes through 4.75 mm C, you can call that as well graded sand. And SP is poorly graded sand which doesn't meet the criteria of CU greater than 6 and CC between 1 and 3. So you have well graded sand and poorly graded sand. Likewise, you have silty sand. M is for silt, S is for sand. So you have silty sand here. Fundamentally, it's sand, but it's silty. So silty sand is when IP is less than 4. And then you have clay sand. SC when IP is greater than 7. If IP is such that it falls between 4 and 7, again you have the border line in which you use the dual symbol, quite similar to the one that we had discussed in the gravel section. So this particular slide is for sand and the previous slide was for gravel. Both of these falls under the coarse grain soil. Now if you have fine-grained and organic soil, you have what is called as a plasticity chart. Now the plasticity chart is something that you get when you draw liquid limit and IP. So IP is in the y-axis and WL is in the x-axis and you have a line like this 
which starts from x is equal to 20 or wl is equal to 20 in this case and whose equation is 0.73 wl minus 20 so it starts from 20 so you have wl minus 20 and its slope is 73 percentage so you have 0.73 and this line is called as an a line then you have a line drawn here corresponding to liquid limit 35 you have another line drawn here corresponding to liquid limit 50 so whatever soil among the fine grain which falls below the a line is silt m m m and whatever falls above the a line is clay c c c and it's further classified based on these two lines, these two straight lines which are passing through 35 and 50. So whatever soil that you have to the left side of 35 or when you have liquid limit less than 35 is of low plasticity. And if it falls between 35 and 50, it's intermediate plasticity. You have clay and you have silt. And if it's greater than 50% liquid limit, you have high plasticity clay and high plasticity silt. So A line in short separates clay from silt and the liquid limits 35 and 50 separates low plasticity, intermediate and high plasticity. Plus you have one more point here. You have 7 and you have 4 here. So IP is equal to 7, IP is equal to 4 and you have 10 here. So the soil that comes in this particular range is CLML which means dual symbol L of course because it's to the left side of WL35 so whatever falls in this zone is of low plasticity and this particular zone where IP is between 4 and 7 and liquid limit is greater than 10 but it falls above A line this particular zone is CLML dual classification clay and silt of low plasticity.